الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد دعاثة المشن رحمه الله تعالى الشرط السادس الشرط السادس ستر العورة ستر العورة دعاثة المشن رحمه الله تعالى the sixth condition الشرط السادس من شروط الصلاة التسعة the sixth condition from the nine conditions of of a salah satru al-awra satru al-awra that one he must cover he must cover the awra the author he says ajma'a ahlu al-ilmi ala fasadi salati man salla uriyanan wa huwa yaqdir that the people of knowledge they have a consensus that the one who prayed while he is naked and he not covering his aura and he not, co- not covering his aura not covering his privates while he is able to then his salat is not accepted it's not correct then his salat is not accepted and not correct this is what the author he's mentioning rahimahullah ta'ala has been transmitted by ibn abdul bar and other than him about this affair that the one who prayed while his aura is uncovered and he prayed without covering his aura while he's able to while he's able to that his uh, prayer will be rejected and not accepted and not considered correct by consensus of the scholars the author he says <coughs> and the definition of the aura of the man the aura of the man with the limits of the aura of the of the man is from the navel to the knees is from the navel to the knees he says what i'm what i'm at kadalika what i'm at kadalika and likewise the slave woman as well the aura for the slave woman as well from the navel to the knees and as for the free woman then her whole body is the aura then her, her whole body is an aura Except for her face in the prayer, except for her face in the prayer, the author he says, "What dariul qawluhu taala?" The evidence for this is the statement of Allah the Most High: "Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjidin." The author he says, "Ay inda kulli salat, ay inda kulli salatin." So the author he mentioned the evidence for this, and that is the statement of Allah the Most High, the meaning of which is, "Oh." O oh, uh, children of Adam, take your adornment at every uh, at every place of prayer. Take your adornment at every place of prayer. In every masjid, the author says what this means, in every place of prayer. So the interpretation of the noble verse, the author he mentioned here, uh, is, O oh, children of Adam, ya bani Adam, O oh, children of Adam, khudu zinatakum, take your adornment. Inda kulli masjidin, ay inda kulli salat. Take your adornment at every, at every masjid, meaning at every place of prayer, meaning at every, and every place of prayer. So this is uh, the issue here, the condition of covering the aura, and uh, this is something that is well known that the person, that a that a person he must cover his aura in in and outside of the salah, in and outside of the salah. A person he must be diligent, a person of faith, a person of iman person of knowledge, a person of dignity, a person of honor and respect, male and female, young and old, they will cover their aura from the eyes of the people. They will cover their aura from the eyes of, of the people, in the prayer and outside of the prayer, in the prayer and, and outside of the prayer. It has been corrected by Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi, and likewise Ibn Majah and Imam Ahmed, from the hadith of Muawiyah bin Hayda, radiyallahu anhu, he says, Qutu ya Rasulullah, صلى الله عليه وسلم أوراتنا ما نأتي منها وما نظر. He said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, our privates, our private parts. What, what should we cover and what should we leave? Any uncovered? Any what are the aspects of the privates that must be covered and what are the aspects that we can leave and not uncover? So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says, قال إحفظ أوراتك إلا من زوجتك وما ملكت يمينك. إحفظ عوراتك إلا من زوجتك وما ملكت يمينك that you must protect your aura 
You must protect your awrah. You, you must cover it and protect it from the eyes of the people that they do not see it, except from your wife and the one whom your right hands possess. And the one whom your right hand possesses. قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِذَا كَانَ الْقَوْمُ بَعْضُهُمْ فِي بَعْضٍ So now he says, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what if the people are all mixed together? What if the people are in a circumstance where they're all together? Meaning there is not proper facilities to completely cover one's aura from the rest of the people and he's in need of, uh, of exposing that. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَلَّا يَرَيَنَّهَا أَحَدٌ إِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَلَّا يَرَيَنَّهَا أَحَدٌ فَلَا يَرَيَنَّهَا If you're able to make sure that nobody at all sees anything from your aura, then you should make sure they do not see anything. And he's so meaning that a person, even if he's in a circumstance where he's, uh, he, he's feeling shy, but he is in a state of need or necessity, mixed up with the people and the likes like this, and he has no place to go, then even in this case, he would not just have no shame or no shyness, rather he would do his best to cover his aura and to hide that from the eyes of the people. قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنْ كَانَ أَحَدُنَا خَارِيًا إِنْ كَانَ أَحَدُنَا خَارِيًا So he says, I said, now, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what about whenever one of us is alone by ourselves, meaning there's nobody around whatsoever. قَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اللَّهُ أَحَقُوا وَنْ يُسْتَحْيَا مِنْهُ مِنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, indeed, Allah has more right that you should be shy from him than from the people. Allah has more right to be shy from, from, the, from to be shy from than the people. Meaning that a person knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that the believers should cover their privates, so therefore he will cover his privates for the sake of Allah. And he will only expose that to the degree that is needed. To the degree that is needed. And, he, and, and, and being shy from Allah and shy from doing something that, uh, or, or leaving something that is pleasing to Allah. Allah, he loves whenever a person, he covers his awrah. This is something that Allah has ordered and uh, something that Allah loves from his slaves. So therefore a person he will do that. So therefore a person he will do that even whenever he's alone, except in cases of necessity, whenever he needs to. Inshallah, some details, they will come. So this is from the evidences of that likewise, along with what the author he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and the evidence that the author he mentioned, no doubt this is the, the first asal. And the bab, khudhu zinatakum. Ya bani Adam, khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Oh, children of Adam, take your adornment at every place of prayer. At every place of prayer. Take your adornment. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amara bi akhdi azina. Wa zinatu qadrun za'idun an satri al awra. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the people to, to, to take their adornment whenever they go to the prayer. And in general, taking the, the adornment, one's adornment is and he, a zina, and, and the adornment, a person's adornment from his clothing is an amount that's greater, that's greater than covering the awrah. But if we were to look at the issue, the people of not as they say, aqallu zina satru al-awrah. هذا وجه الاستدلال بالآية. And yani this is how the people of knowledge, they use this as an evidence. The, law, the smallest amount, what could be considered. In reality, taking, this, taking one's adornment for the prayer, this requires for a person to cover himself in a manner greater than the awrah. Hey, that, means, that means he will cut, in order to take his zina, his adornment and beautification for every prayer, he would have to cover his awrah and more. He would have to cover his awrah and more in a better manner, in a greater manner. So the people of not, as they say, the, the lightest amount or the littlest amount of zina, I mean, that one could be considered implementing this, this verse here, is that he will cover his awrah. Is that he will cover his awrah. أَقَلُّ زِينَ سَتْرُ الْعَوْرَةِ فَيُكُونُ وَاجِبًا فَيُكُونُ وَاجِبًا So therefore, covering the, the awrah is an obligation because Allah he is ordered to take your adornment in the prayer. So the lightest or the littlest amount of adornment could be, that could be considered as at least covering the awrah. So therefore covering the awrah is an obligation. So therefore covering the awrah is an obligation. So from here we see that mina zina ma, ma huwa wajibun wa ma huwa mustahab. And from this aspect, from the zina and the adornment, there is an amount that is an obligation. And then there is amount likewise that is recommended. That is recommended. So the obligation is to at least cover the awrah. Is to at least cover the awrah. And this is from the evidences of that. And uh, specifically here in the prayer, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ In every place of prayer. In every place of prayer. And this is general. 
So this includes no doubt in the houses of Allah, in the masajid, but likewise in every place of prayer, whether a person is in his home, whether a person is in the house of Allah, or whether he's in his home, whether he's in his home, whether the people are with him and can see him, or whether he is alone, whether he is alone, because of the narration that had preceded, could be understood here likewise. That indeed Allah, he has more right that you should be shy from than the people, that he should be, you should be shy from, and then the people. So that was with regards to the aura in general. But likewise in the prayer, and has been reported authentically from Nafi, the Mawla of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, that whenever he was young, Ibn Umar, he gave him uh, two garments. He gave him two, two garments, any nice garments for him to wear. He was his freed slave. And he mentioned that one time he was praying in one garment. He was praying, but he was alone inside the home in one garment. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he seen him praying like that. He had one garment on wrapping around himself. And whenever he was finished, he reprimanded him. He said, did I not, did I not give you two garments? Did I, did I not give you two garments? He said, yes, you gave me two garments. He says, if you were to leave this house and go on the other side of the wall to do some business, would you not put them both on? He said, yes, I would put them both on. He said, then indeed Allah, he has more right. In Allah, that Allah, he has more right that you would adorn yourself for him. Allah has more right that you would adorn yourself for him. This is the correct understanding. Even some people, they will, they will be so negligent that not only in their home, but rather they'll come out to, to their house. They'll come out of their house to the house of Allah in the garments that they will sleep in and the lights like this. So based upon this, and even if a person is in his house, even if a person is in his house, it's better for him to wear the proper clothing or the better clothing whenever he's going to pray, whenever he's going to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. No doubt what is the obligation is to cover the awrah. This is what we'll discuss. But now the issue is just understanding this verse. خُذُوا زِينَتِكُمْ فِي كُلِّ مَسْجِدْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدْ Take your adornment at every place of prayer. So even if a person he is alone, he would adorn himself in the best manner uh, in order to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. In order to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether he's standing before Allah in private in his home or whether he's standing before Allah in the masjid with his brothers standing along with him. So this is something to keep in mind, to keep in mind, to take the adornment, and, he, and that one he would adorn himself for the sake of Allah. That one he would adorn himself for the sake of Allah. So if a person he was wearing the pajamas that he was sleeping in, for example, or, or, or the likes, and then he stood in prayer for that, and he, would he stand in front, would he go out even to the store in that, or would he go to a, a, a meeting for, uh, a job in that or would he go meet the people that he honors and respects for that or would he change his clothes or would he change his clothes or whenever he comes to the house of Allah likewise whatever he would he go and to stand for the salah would he wear those same clothing whenever he goes to an important meeting or an important uh, situation or if he was invited to a gathering and the likes like this well, from one of his brothers or would he adorn himself in a greater manner or would he adorn himself in a greater manner? No doubt if he's going to face the people many times, he will adorn himself in the greater manner. He will iron his clothing. He will, he will check his clothing. He will put on perfume. He will, he, will take, uh, he will take means to beautify himself. And he, because he's going to go uh, where the people can see him. He's going to go where the people uh, are going to look at him. And uh, they're, going to, uh, they're, they're going to make an opinion from his appearance. They're going to make an opinion about him from his appearance. So he's concerned about that. So therefore he beautifies himself. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he has more right that we will beautify ourselves in front of him. Allah Azza wa Jal, he has more right. He has more right. Some of the people of knowledge were asked about this. A person who, if he is going to go out with his brothers to eat in a restaurant, for example, he'll put on the best clothing uh, and the best garments and he'll iron everything and, and, and look very presentable. If he's gonna go out and he, to eat with his brothers or uh, to, to a gathering at someone's house and the likes like this, but whenever he comes to the poor, he comes with his hair here and there and he comes wearing his pajamas and the clothing that he slept in and he has no care or concern. He said, this is a weakness in faith. So it's only a weakness in tawheed that carried him to do this. Had a person had strong faith and strong tawheed, then he would uh, have realized this affair. So the, the fact that a person wants to look good for the people but does not care how he looks in front of Allah, this is contrary to faith. Rather, he should care and he should have concern for that. Rather, he should care and have concern for that. So this is uh, an important point. But with regards to the, 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 the evidences, with regards to the evidences of the obligation of covering the awrah, there are many. And from that is what is collected, uh, is collected by Bukhari Muslim from the Hadith Jabir, radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that one time he was traveling with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he came to him and found him praying. So he prayed beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but at this time he only had one garment on. So he said, فَاشْتَمَلْتُ بِهِ And he wrapped it around himself and threw it over his shoulders. 
he, it was not a large, it was not a, a, a it was not a wide uh, garment, so it was only one piece. So he wrapped it around himself and threw one side over his shoulder and the other side over the other shoulder. In this manner, if he were to bend in the likes like this over, then his privates would become uncovered. So the Prophet Sallallahu noticed him and he, whenever he's moving to try to keep his privates becoming from coming uh, from uh, from coming uncovered. So he asked him after that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, "Ma had al ishtimal." He said, what is this garment here? He said, it's a thobe. I just have one thobe on. So the Prophet Sallallahu told him, he said, When can I tazir bihi? He said, if your garment is, is wide, and wide, and wide enough for your whole body, then wrap it around your body. And wrap it around your waist and then around your shoulders. And that way, wrap it around your waist so that way your privates are covered and then throw it around your shoulders in this manner. That's if it's wide enough to do that. If it's not, if it was not wide enough to do that, fit tazir bihi, then use it as an izar. And if it's not big enough to do all of that, then you have to use it as an izar. And to cover the, the main part of the aura, the aura that is shameful to be seen. And that's most shameful to be seen, al aura al mughallada yani al farjain you need to cover that so then if you only have one and it's not big enough then you wrap it around your waist to cover to cover your aura so this is an indication that the aura has to be it has to be covered it has to be covered likewise uh, it's been uh, connected as well by uh, Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Al-Imam Ahmed from the, and Al-Imam Ahmed from the Haditha Aisha radiallahu anha that she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said la yakbaru lahu salat ha'idhin that Allah he does not accept the prayer of a woman who is of the age of puberty except with a covering, except while she's covered. Illa bi khimar, yani the head covering, the coverings for, that covers from her head down to, yani covering her whole body from the head down, from the head down. Allah he doesn't accept the prayer of the woman who has reached the age of puberty, the ha'il, yani the bariga, illa bi khimar, except with the khimar, meaning except that she has the proper covering over. Her aura. We will find that the aura of the woman, as the author mentioned, in the salat, yani, kulha aura, illa wajhaha, kama qala, aw illa wajhaha wa kafeha, except for her, her, her face, as the author mentioned, and, or her face and her hands, or her face and her hands. The important point now is to see that these are evidences clarifying the obligation of this affair. Likewise, it has been uh, corrected as well. From Bar Bukhari Muslim, from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah radiAllahu anhu, this is preceded with us in the chapter of the Hajj, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent uh, Abu Hurairah Abu radiAllahu anhu and a number of individuals in the in the Hajj along with Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu, and they're going around Mina, and they were announcing, they were they were proclaiming to the people, Allah yahujja baad al ami mushrikun, wa la yatufu bil baiti orian, that after this year no pagan will make Hajj. No, pag, no pagan will make hajj, and likewise, no one who was bare naked with no clothing on will make the waf around the house of Allah after this year. They're going around making this an announcement, and they're proclaiming this. And likewise, it has been connected as well by An-Nasai, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, At-Tawafu bil-Bayti salatun fa'aqillu fiha, fa'aqillu fihi al-Kalam. That making tawaf around the house of Allah is a salat. So speak little in that. And some wording is likewise, and he so, Whoever is going to say something, then say some, then let him say that which is good. And if he's making tawaf, because it's a salah, so the 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 the, the tawaf is considered a salah, and it's considered an action of worship like this in this manner. So therefore, it has uh, similar rulings. It has similar rulings, although there are differences. No doubt, no doubt about that. So if it's an obligation to cover the aura in the tawaf, then even more rightfully, it's an obligation to cover the aura in the salah. So this is from the qiyas al awla from Al Qiyas at Awla. So these are some of the evidences with regards to this. That the, the aura it must be covered in the salah. And likewise as has proceeded as well outside of, of the salah. So the author he mentioned the consensus here that the one who prayed or yanin, and he without any clothes on, and he exposing his aura while he's able to cover the aura, that his prayer will be considered incorrect and not accepted. That his prayer will be considered incorrect and not accepted. There's a consensus with regards to this, and likewise mentioned by Ibn Abdul Bar, Rahimahullah Taala, the same uh, the same affair, the same affair. So we have now the issue of uh, of al aura, al aura. It's also known as al sawa, al aura here as sawa, al sawa. Yani min al su, min al su. It's called al sawa. The sawa is called the aura, meaning the private parts, because. Uh, this is why it's called a so'a, because uh, a person, any you know, of sound mind, 
a person of sound mind and intelligence, he does not like for his aura to become uncovered. It makes him and he feel bad. It makes him feel bad and he does not like that. He does not like for it to become uncovered, nor does he like for people to look at it. This is any hada yusu'uhu. Hada yusu'uhu. So therefore it's called a so'a. Because if it comes uncovered, this will make a person not feel happy. He'll feel bad about that and he will not like for the people to see that. And he'll, he'll feel shame. He'll feel shame and shy. And this will disturb him and bother him. And again, this is for those who have sound mind and, and sound understanding and, and a clean heart. As for those who are contrary to that, then they will themselves just expose their own aura and show that to the people, believing that that is something that is good and beneficial. وَلِيَذُ بِاللَّهِ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الْخِذْلَانِ مِنْ الْخِذْلَانِ The aura with regards to the understanding here, or the aura in the understanding of the people of knowledge, al aura عِنْدَ الْعُلَمَاءِ وَالْفُقَهَاءِ نَوْعَانِ the aura with regards to the understanding of the people of knowledge is two types. It's two types. Aura to nadar, aura to aura to nadar, what aura to fi salah. Aura to nadar, what aura to fi salah. There's two types of aura. It's not one type of aura with the people of knowledge. The one is, the first one is the aura that one he must cover from the eyes of the people. Aura to nadar. Yani that that's considered the aura that the people they're not allowed to look at. He and the yahrumu and nadaru ilayha. The aura, aura to nadar, this is the aura that is haram and not allowed for people to look at. It's not, it's not allowed. It's haram and not allowed for people to look at. This is one aspect of the aura. There's a difference between the two. And then there's like an aura, then also there's an, the other aura, the second type, the aura to fi salat. Wa hiya lati yajibu satruha fi salat. Wa hiya lati yajibu satruha fi salat. Wa bainuhuma farq. Wa bainuhuma farqun. There's a difference between the two. There's the aura that's not allowed for people to see or look at. And then there's another aura that must be covered in the salat. So we're, t- we're discussing the one in salat, it's extra. So there's a difference between the two. For example, for example, the hair of a woman. Is that considered the aura for her father? For her brother? For her father, for her brother, for example, for her mahadim? Is that considered aura? <coughs> Is that considered aura? Is it haram for her father to see the hair of, on her head? To see the, her, her, her forearms? No. But in the salat, is it allowed for her to uncover her hair? No, it's not allowed for her to cover. The, the people of knowledge have a consensus. Likewise, if a woman, she prayed with her whole head uncovered, then that prayer would be rejected and not accepted. If the whole head is uncovered, and she prayed with the whole hair, all of her hair uncovered, the prayer would be, would be rejected and not accepted it and there's a consensus about that so therefore the the covering the hair is the aura in the salat is the aura in salat but not the aura of the nether it's the aura of the nether for the ajanib for the strangers but not for her maharim you understand this so there's a difference between the two there's a difference between the two likewise we will find as well that from the aura for the man and the prayer likewise is the shoulders is the shoulders or at least one of them so is it uh, allowed for a man to see another man's shoulder? No problem. If a man to look at another man's shoulder, or both shoulders even, to look at both of his shoulders, it's allowed to see that and to look at that? It's allowed. There's no harm in that. There's no blame in that. But in the prayer, in the prayer, would his prayer be considered good and proper? And Allah knows best in the best opinion, he has to at least cover one of them. We'll see the issue here. So the, the aura and the prayer, the point now is, to understand in general, the aura in the prayer is different than the aura for the for the sight, the aura for for the sight. And that which is in a, that which is haram to look at is different from that which is that for, is different from that which must be covered in the prayer. Is different from that which that which must be covered in the prayer. So from here, some of the people of not as I mentioned, it's better to say instead of uh, setur aura to say uh, setruma. Setru ma yajibu setruhu fi salat Aw al-akhdu bi zina And then because this is what Allah He mentioned in His book He ordered to take zina So the zina is going to cover all of these affairs And in the prayer you have to take the zina Because in reality the aura yani, Is a bit different in the prayer Then it is outside of the prayer Bi'atha rahimahullahu ta'ala Indicating an important point Likewise the issue of the Wa huwa qadir وَأَجْمَعَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ عَلَى فَسَادِ صَلَاةِ مَنْ صَلَّ عُرِيَانٍ وَهُوَ قَادِرٍ 
This is one of those issues here. Likewise, some of the fuqaha, they will say, in this condition here, they will say, Satru al-awrati ma'al qudra. Satru al-awrati ma'al qudra. Then he, that he must cover the awra along with ability. If a person, he did not have the ability. And he, the, the, the fuqaha, they mention an example of people were on a ship, for example. Some people were, some people were on a ship, and then the ship... Uh, had they had a shipwreck and all of their belongings were lost and they were whitewashed some individuals were washed up on an island they had no clothing then uh, now they're excused and they would have to pray now they're excused but they also still have to pray they differed how they would pray and he, will they stand up or will they sit down so on and so forth will they all pray sitting down and that's a difference of opinion but the point is that uh, a person he must cover the aura so long as he is able as for if he was not able to if he was in a situation for example like, like this example the fuqaha they mentioned or if he was sick uh, in, in, in a bed or, or whatever the case may be and it just so happened that his aura was uncovered for, for, whatever the, for whatever reason and the time for prayer came and he was not able to cover that then he will pray as he is and he will not have to repeat and he will not have to repeat because this is a condition along with, with the ability so if he didn't have the ability he will be excused and Allah knows best fear Allah as much as much as as you can fear Allah as much as you can also, with regards to this, we discuss the issue of the clothing. Because sometimes maybe a person, he'll be wearing clothing, but his aura is not covered. Maybe a person, he'll be wearing clothing, but his aura is not covered. But his aura is, uh, is, not, uh, is not covered. So the clothing, it has to be, uh, it has to be thick enough to cover the, the aura, the part of the body where the aura is at least. If the clothing is thick, if the clothing is thick, you know, like normal clothing, and it's not see-through, then you can't see through it. Even if you look hard and you squint to look any you know, really close, you cannot see through it. You cannot see the skin on the other side. Then this one is considered covering his aura. If he covered his aura with a like, say this garment, this one is considered covering his aura. As for somebody who had a garment on that you can see the skin from the other side of the garment. He put a garment, he has a type of garment on that's so thin that from the other side of the garment, he can see the skin. This is, if, if that was on the aura, this is not considered covering the aura. This is not considered covering the aura. It's considered, it's, it's as if it's not even there. A person who has some thin garment on, on over his body and that garment was over the aura with no, with no other garment on top of that and you can see the skin from behind that garment, then this is not going to be considered. This is not going to be considered. He's considered as if he has, as if he has uh, no clothing on. The, the ruling is, is the same. The ruling is the same. As for if the clothing was thick, but if you, if you look real close, then possibly you can kind of see the skin sometimes like this, then the people of Nara, they differ, and Allah knows best, this one would, would be considered covering the aura. And it's, it, you can't see it, but somebody were to look real close and really and get real close in real fine detail, maybe he could see the skin behind it and the lights like this with some great effort, then uh, Allah knows best, this one, uh, would uh, would be considered uh, co covering the aura. This one would be considered covering the aura because you cannot see it except with great hard effort and possibly you don't know for sure and the likes like this because the clothing, they, they, they're in this manner. So if it's covering properly, the garment is thick and the likes like this, you can't see the skin on the other side, Alhamdulillah, uh, this is proper and it's covered. And there's no doubt about that. If there is, uh, the garment is so thin that you can see the skin on the other side, then this is not proper and this is not going to suffice and there's no doubt about that so for example sometimes a person maybe he'll have a thobe on but the thobe is very thin they have some type of thobe sometimes or garments that they'll throw over their their shoulders and the likes like this maybe will cover them but but it's thin you can see the skin on the other side so if a person for example he had he had thin pants he had pants on he had a pants on uh, underneath him and he pants covering from his navel to his knees and then on top of his shoulders, he put this uh, garment on, or he had a shirt on like one, then he put this garment on the see-through, you know, or falling over his body like this. And then if he's in the prayer, and then he pulled up his shorts to where his, to where his thighs are showing, to where his thighs are showing. Now, we wouldn't say because he has a garment on top. No, that garment on top is like, it's like it's not even there. So now his aura has become uncovered, and his prayer will be, invalidated if he did that on purpose if he did it on purpose so it has to be covered it has to be covered likewise the people of not as they mentioned uh, another type of individual who he's covered but his aura is not truly yeah, and his aura is covered his aura is covered but in reality he's exposing himself and that's the one who wears the tight clothing 
the one who wears the tight pants until it's covering the shape of his body is clear the shape you he put pant he puts pants on uh, or and a shirt on that the, sh the shape of his legs and his bottom akramakum Allah is very clear you can see it from from when he's standing when he's moving well, and the lights like this like the shape of his body you can see the, the shape of uh, of his aura and the shape of his thighs and the lights like this so, so this one is uh, the people of not as they mentioned this is not allowed and uh, Allah knows best his prayer is correct but he's sinning and uh, and uh, uh, and Allah knows best his prayer is great because his aura is covered but in reality it's still exposing himself it's still, he's still exposing himself so this person should be reprimanded he should be taught he should be educated that uh, the prayer is, is not good in this man rather it's not good in this man to, 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 to walk around for the people to see and to wear pants that are so tight that the shape of the leg can be seen the shape of the waist can be seen the shape of the body can be seen from a man and not, and, and not from a woman and not from a woman, and the people of not as they mentioned, that what is intended here is whenever, whenever they're, 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 they're not moving. Because whenever a person, even if a person, he wears a, a very baggy thobe, he wears a, a very baggy thobe, if he's in ruku, maybe something, maybe the thobe will show his, his figure or whenever he's in sujood or in the likes like this, this is not what is intended. This is something that you, it cannot be avoided. And he meaning whenever a person, he's standing still. Whenever a person, he's standing still, not, not even moving. Not even moving, he's standing still. At this time you can see his aura outlined because of how tight his garments are. This is the one that we're talking about. As for the one who has a, a garments on that are baggy and he's standing still, you can't see his outline. But then maybe if he goes to Rukur and puts his hands on his knees and, and the likes like this, then maybe part of the outline could be seen or vision to Jude at this time because he's moving. This is something that normally cannot be avoided. So this is not going to harm him. But the one who puts on clothing, that whenever he stands, and he's not even moving, his whole figure is being showed, this is the one that is blameworthy, and this is the one that is not good. This is the one that is not good. The author, he says, And uh, the, the definition or the limits, the limits of the, of the aura of the rajul, of the man, is, he says, rahimahullah, from the navel to the knees from the navel to the knees Allah knows best the best uh, ibarah or the best expression to use to refer here uh, to, to refer to the aura is to say ma bayna as-surrati wa rukba ma bayna as-surrati wa rukba that which is between the surra which is the navel and the rukba which is the the knee that that which is between the two because Allah knows best the the surra and the rukba are not from the aura the knee is not from the aura and the, the, the navel itself is not from the aura but that which is below the navel all the way to the knees all the way to the knees so in order to cover that properly then the, the part of these has to be covered and because everything below the navel is from the aura and then all the way to to the knees so everything above the knees is the aura is the aura so this is the issue with regards to uh, to the male it's been collected by Daru Qutni uh, authentically uh, from the hadith of Ibn Amr عنهما, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said ma bayna surrati wa rukbati awra ma bayna surrati wa rukbati awra that which is between the navel and the knees is, is an awra is an awra likewise it has been uh, collected by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and likewise Adarimi what Imam Ahmed from the hadith of Jarhid uh, Jarhid, he was uh, عنه, He was from Ahl Sufa. He was from the from those poor people who lived in the Sufa in the portion of the Masjid uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was set aside for the poor people that they would come and the travelers and the likes like this and they would stay there and, and live there for some time. From them, Jarhid, and he's mentioning that he was there one time uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him inna and his 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 his, his thigh is showing. He said inna al fakhida awra. In al fakhid the aura, that the fakhid is the aura, the, the thigh is the aura. And one wording like was, ghathi fakhidak fa inna aura. Cover your thigh because indeed it's the aura. And another wording like was, ma alimta an al fakhid aura. Did you not know that the fakhid, that the thigh is the aura? Did you not know that the thigh is the aura? So all of this yani, is uh, to emphasize this affair. So the, from the navel to the knees is, is an aura, is, is an aura. So it has to be, it has to be covered. It has to be covered in and outside of the Salah. In and outside of the Salah. But here we're talking about the Salah. So if it becomes uncovered, especially on purpose, if it becomes uncovered on purpose, a person who uncovered that on purpose, it will invalidate the prayer. It will 
invalidate the prayer. It would invalidate the prayer. So this is what the author is mentioning here. Al-Ama is the slave woman. The Ama is the slave woman. So we won't go, we will not go into a lot of details with regards to this. But uh, just to mention briefly, the, and this is from uh, the Ahkam Ariq, from the rulings of slavery uh, that are legislated in the Deen of Al-Islam, which was revealed above the heavens uh, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, this is from any of the issue of slavery, Min Ahkam Al-Jihad. Min Ahkam Al-Jihad. It's from the rulings of Al-Jihad. From the rulings of Al-Jihad. And it has uh, wisdom behind that and great benefit. And uh, there are uh, rulings with regards to that. And it's not what some people may think, especially from hearing about slavery in this land. And these lands that people will be captured and stolen and taken from their family and forced into slavery. This is not what is intended. This is not what is intended at, at all. Whether there are, this, this is not accepted, uh, not in jihad and not other, and other than that and not in Islam at all. This is not what is intended from slavery. But this is something that was legislated. And it remains, that legislation remains. But as for in these days, uh, because of the weakness of, uh, of the ummah, the, 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 this, uh, these rulings, yani we, are, uh, and we are, or the majority of the believers, are not in need of them. The majority of us are not in need of them. But in any case, the, the ama, the slave woman, the woman who is a slave, the mentioning here, her aura is like the aura of a man, from her navel to the knees. And this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars. But uh, a number of the scholars likewise have a different, a different opinion. They mention some of them that her whole, her whole, her whole body is the aura just like the woman, uh, just, like, just like the free woman. And uh, Ibn uh, Qudama, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned the consensus that if, uh, if the ama were to pray with her hair uncovered, her prayer would be, cons her prayer would be accepted. Her prayer would be accepted. So some of the people of not as mentioned that the, the aura of the ama in the, in the prayer is, uh, is uh, everything except for her hair and her face and her hands. Everything except for her hair and her face and her hands. And uh, some of the people of not as mentioned likewise, just to imagine, just imagining the statement, just imagining the, the position of the, of the majority of the scholars here is su sufficient in refuting that position. And imagining that there is a woman praying in that manner, uh, this, I need to imagine that is sufficient. I need to find that, that that is not the strongest or best opinion or position. I need that a woman, she would be praying in that manner, any with her top uncovered and likewise her legs, so on and so forth, on, on down. This is sufficient to clarify that this is not the proper uh, legislative ruling and Allah knows best, even if it was a position of, of the Jumhur. Of the, of the Jumhur. So uh, th this is here what the author he is, he is mentioning. Along with the aura of the rajul, which is from the, from the navel to the knees. Also, this is the aura of the, of, the, of the young boy who has reached the age of 10. The young boy who has reached the age of 10, this is his aura likewise, from the navel to the knees. From the, from the navel to the knees, because at this age, the age of 10, he will be disciplined for the prayer. So now he's required to have the same requirements uh, that, uh, the, that, that the male has. That, that, the, that, the, that the one who has reached the age of puberty has. So the boy who is at the age of 10, then uh, he also has to cover from the navel to the knees. And also the young girl who is from uh, the age of Tamiz also has to cover at least from the navel to the knees. As for the boy who was at the age of Tamiz but, not be, but, but before the age of 10, the, the young male child who is at the age of Tamiz, before the age of 10, then his aura and salah is al-farjan, is al-farjan, is the front and the back, and yani al-aura al the stern aura, and the two privates, the front and the back, meaning if he were to pray with his thighs showing, his prayer would be considered correct. And if he's seven, eight, nine, like this, seven, eight, nine, like this. So this is the details the people of not as they have mentioned, but that does not mean that any a person who will pray like that or he would let his children pray like that. Rather, this is just to clarify that if it happened, then the, the people of knowledge have mentioned that it would be considered correct. But uh, no doubt, even if he was seven or, or even below that, a person, he will raise his children to be upon uh, al-hishma, uh, to be upon al-haya, that they will be upon modesty, al-iffa, uh, upon modesty and bashfulness and shyness, and they will not be walking around 
like this exp- exposing their self further, the, the parent will, will raise them upon that from the early age, even though it's not an obligation, even if the awrah became uncovered and the likes like this, we're not just we'll let the child run around exposing himself and the likes like this. If it's a baby, it's different. Under the age of Tamiz, and if a child under the age of Tamiz, the people of knowledge that at Tifl, the baby, or two, any up to two, three, four, and the likes like this, he doesn't have an awrah. He doesn't have an awrah. So this is something much, much, yani, mo- much more lenient. But whenever he becomes older and the likes like this, uh, especially in the age of a Tamiz, yani, you're going to start uh, teaching him to cover himself. Teaching him that to cover, teaching the male, little boy, the boy, the thigh is the aura. Cover your, cover your aura. Cover, cover that. If you're going to walk around and run around in the likes like this, you should uh, learn how to, to cover himself from an early age. That way, by the time they reach the age of puberty or close to that, they will be very shy. Their whole life, they're covering themselves like this. And likewise, the women as well, the, 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 young, the young girls as well. They should, be, uh, they should learn that, that this is any the proper way. But they should not be forced any before the age. Uh, before the age of puberty, for example, forced to wear the hijab, whether they should be encouraged, or they're at the age of Tamiz, they will not be any forced to wear the hijab, but they'll be told and encouraged to wear the hijab. So that way, by the time they reach the age of puberty, they'll be accustomed to that. They'll be accustomed to that. And many times, if the other sisters and the mother and the like in, in the household are already wearing the proper hijab, then they will also make it'll be easy for them to wear that. It'll be easy for them to wear that. And uh, if they are encouraged in this manner and not forced, and they do it uh, on their own, even before, even before it's an obligation upon them, inshallah, by the time it's an obligation upon them, they'll be very shy. This will, this will bring shyness in their heart. Covering oneself from the, from, from the people and, 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 and being reminded about that and uh, being worried about that, this is awrah, this is aib. The, also from the meaning of the so ayani, it's an aib. It's an aib, it's considered aib, it's considered shameful that the aura is uncovered. So the child that's cultivated upon this, then it'll be easy for him. It'll be easy for him, inside and outside of the prayer. Inside and outside of the prayer. But from the lowliest affairs, is that a person who would expose his own aura uh, inside the prayer, even, like some of them they do. And even uh, also as well, outside of the prayer, what do you have to So the aura, it must be, it must be covered. So the fact that the people of not, as they mentioned, that this is the limit for the aura, doesn't mean that a person who just walk around, yani, with that covered only and exposing, uh, exposing himself rather, he will, uh, he will, he will adorn himself in the prayer and outside of the prayer, in the prayer and outside of the prayer. In Allah, the na'ma ada ada abdihi fa inu yuhibu an yara an yara an tura ni'matuhu alayhi. That if Allah subhanahu wa taala ida an na'ma ada abdihi bi ni'ma. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a slave, one of his slaves a blessing, then indeed Allah, he loves that, the blessing is seen on, on, on him. So to, to adorn oneself and to put on nice clothing and to cover oneself properly is something that is praiseworthy and good. It's something that is pra- praiseworthy and good inside of the prayer and, uh, and outside of the prayer. Inside of the prayer and, and outside uh, of the prayer. As for the woman who's reached the age of puberty, as for the woman of, who has reached the age of puberty then, uh, her whole body is an aura. Her whole body is an aura. Any from those uh, people who are not from her maharam, that are not from her maharim. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that. And it's been uh, corrected by a Tirmidhi from the Hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu that he said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said al mar'atu awratun al mar'atu awratun fi idha kharajat istashrafah shaitan that the woman she is an aura. And if she goes out of her house, then the shaitan, he uses her as a lure to entice the people. He uses her as a lure to, uh, to entice the people, to entice the people. So uh, this is the issue. The woman outside of uh, the prayer, her whole body is an aura. She must cover her whole body from the eyes of the strange men. From the eyes of the strange men. As for in the prayer, then the author he mentioned here, Rahimahullah ta'ala wal hurratu kulluha awratun illa wajhaha fi salat. Illa wajha fi salat that the woman her whole body is an aura except for her face in prayer. Except for her face in prayer, meaning outside of her prayer, the face is the aura. The face is is the aura, is part of the aura. So uh, with regards to this, uh, there is also a consensus about this. There's a consensus that it's allowed for the woman to uh, to uncover her face in the prayer. For the woman to uncover her face in the prayer, except whenever there are strange men around her, except whenever there are strange men 
uh, around her. So she will, uh, whenever she's praying, the many, uh, uh, a lot of the people of not, there's a consensus that it's allowed for her. Many of the people of not as mentioned it's a sunnah, comparing her likewise to the situation of the muhrimah. The muhrimah, and she's in the state of ihram, making the hajj, she must uncover her face. So likewise in the prayer, Allah knows best, the woman, she would uncover her face. Except if there are strange men around her, then she will cover her face while she's in the salah. While she is, is in the salah. And uh, also uh, uh, a number uh, of uh, the scholars mentioned as well, that in the prayer, likewise, her hands are also not from the aura. Her hands are also not from the aura. But the others mentioned that it is. And you like the author he's mentioning, the opinion of, of the Hanabila. So uh, Allah knows best if she covered her hands in the prayer, inshallah, that's better. But if they came uncovered in the prayer, inshallah, the prayer is, is still valid and Allah knows best. So Ali Imam Malik and Ali Imam Shafi, both of them, they have the opinion that the hands uh, will, are allowed. Any similar to the issue of the face. Similar to the issue of the face. The woman who is the muhrimah, it's allowed for her. Or it's an obligation for her to uncover her face. And also, her hands. She does, وَلَا تَتَنَقَبُوا that the woman who is the muhrimah, she does not wear the niqab, nor does she wear the gloves. So uh, the opinion of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, rahimahum Allah Ta'ala, is that also the hands are not included. Also the hands are not included. If they're uncovered in the prayer, inshallah, the prayer is good. So Shaykh ibn Baz, rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the, the opinion of Imam Ahmad to cover them, but if they become uncovered, inshallah, because there's no clear evidence here, uh, their prayer will be good. Then we have the issue of the feet. The feet likewise are from uh, from the aura, from the aura, and, and the salat and outside of the salat, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the aura. So the feet they have to be covered. The feet they have to be covered. The hands should be covered. Likewise, if they come uncovered, inshallah, there's no blame in that. But the feet they should be covered, and uh, and Allah knows best. So this aura here, this aura. <clears throat> this aura that we have been discussing, if a person uncovers any part of this aura intentionally, intentionally, then the prayer is invalidated. A person uncovers any part of this aura on purpose in the prayer, the prayer will be invalidated. The prayer will be uh, invalidated. As for if uh, a person, uh, his aura became uncovered on accident, not on purpose, then uh, the people of knowledge, they mention some details. For example, if a person, he's, he's praying, if a person is praying in the, and he just has a, a, a thobe on with no pants under his thobe and then the, a wind came and raised up his, and raised up his thobe until his, uh, his so'a became any exposed, until his privates became exposed. Uh, and he pushed them down. He pushed it down real fast. He's praying, but then his, the wind blew up until his backside is exposed or even his front side. Then he pushed it down real fast. Then inshallah his prayer is correct. Inshallah his prayer is correct. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not uh, place a burden upon someone that which they are not able to bear. And uh, each soul will have that which, is, that which it earned and that which is against it, that which it earned. So this person here did not earn that. And he did not do that himself. So this is something that happened. Uh, and uh, he removed it. Uh, he took care of it. He covered it immediately. He, he, recovered, he covered it immediately. So that's the case if it was a, a great portion of his aura became shown. But he covered it quickly. Inshallah his prayer. A great portion of his aura became shown. Yani a portion is considered fahish. And a, a large portion of his aura became shown on accident, but he covered it quickly. So likewise, if a, if a small portion became seen and he covered it quickly, then this is even more rightful. So if a person, he, a portion of his aura became uncovered on accident and he covered it back quickly, inshallah, the prayer, the prayer is good. But if it became uncovered uh, and he left it like that and he did not cover it back quickly, then it would invalidate his prayer. It would invalidate his prayer, if, 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 especially if he knew about that. If it came un uncovered and he did not rush to cover it back, then it would invalidate his prayer. 
If it's a light amount, some of the people of knowledge mentioned, inshallah, it could be excused. If it's only a small light, what's considered a light amount of the of the aura, and it would not be likewise at the aura and mughallada, just a small portion of the aura became uncovered, uh, just a little bit, and uh, he did not uh, cover it right away. Inshallah, the prayer would be correct. But if uh, if it was a, a large portion, for example, some of the people they're trying with that today, whenever they wear those tight pants, whenever they wear those tight pants, and then they'll wear along with the tight pants, the, the tight shirts, and they'll wear the tight pants that go that fall down, and the the tight shirts that rise up, and then whenever they go to a ruku or sujud, then they they become exposed, they become exposed. So if it's the back, for example, a part of the back which is also considered below the navel. And the likes like this, this would be and it's something light if he covered it up quickly or for just a little bit became exposed. Allah knows best, yani maybe there will be some leniency. Uh, but if, uh, if the middle of his bottom becomes clear, then this is uh, going to invalidate the prayer. Because this is considered yani, something that's it's fahish. Yani, the, the, the person he sees that, a person he just seen the back of a person, that's one thing, but whenever any yani, the, the the split in his bottom is seen, then this one right here is something that is considered filthy, something that's considered disgusting. So if that happened and he did not cover that right away, then his prayer is invalid. And his prayer is invalid, he needs to start over. What do you have to be done? So this is something that, that should be known. Even some of the people of not as they mentioned, even if it, some, some of them, they'll be harsh on this person because he's already belittling himself and putting himself in this situation. Why, why is he wearing these tight pants that, that drip down and these tight shirts that raise up and then on top of that, he wants to bow down and, and, and prostrate and likes like this. And it's even worse for the, the, for the ills that he's given the person behind him. Sometimes a person he's praying next to his brother or behind his brother. And then he's yeah, and he harmed by this, this foul sight that he has to see. Because this person has no care or concern. No care or concern. And he's exposing himself in this manner. So uh, again, if it's a, a large amount of the aura and, uh, and it's considered something that's foul, if it's not covered quickly, then it would invalidate the prayer. Even if it was an accident. Even if it was an accident. Even if he didn't intend to. But it's, a, it's considered a, a foul amount. A foul portion that's uncovered. People see it and they're like, oh, the billah. Like this, this one right here, if, if he did not hurry up and cover, it would invalidate his prayer. Even if he did not do it on purpose. As for if it was a large, the same amount, but he hurried up and covered it up. And it was an accident, now he's excused. Now he is excused and uh, and Allah knows best. If a person, uh, he w was, was unaware or she was unaware of some of these affairs uh, and they had prayed uh, in violation of some of these conditions previously, and, and when there's more conditions to come as we know, but just to mention now, then uh, what will one do? For example, one, a woman right now, she's been praying with her feet uncovered the whole time. Or she prayed with her hair and covered the whole time. She did not realize any in her home, for example. She thought if she's in her home, it's all good. Maybe, for example. For example. Or some of the other conditions that have preceded. And then now they come to know. They come to know today, for example. What what would what would we say to them about that which has preceded? Uh, 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 Make all those, uh, count those days up. How long, how, how, many, how many days did you pray with your hair uncovered? How many days did you pray with your feet uncovered? How many days did you pray without wudu? How many days did you pray while after eating camel meat? <laughs> like this, huh? We, we go make all of them up, count them up and make them up. La, la, what, what will we say? If you did that right now, if you did that right now for us in our, in our time right now, we just prayed Maghrib. So if you prayed Maghrib like that, that the one that we just prayed, then go back and pray it again. Go back and pray it. As for the other ones, then inshallah, repent, you, you need to seek, the, yeah, alhamdulillah, you're forgiven, seek forgiveness for that and, and just follow the right way now. And the evidence for that is the hadith al Musi salatahu. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned to the one who prayed bad, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and he prayed. And then he came and gave salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned the salam and said, go pray again, you didn't pray. He came back and did the same thing three times. So every time the Prophet Sallallahu said, you go pray again, you didn't pray. So he only made him repeat the prayer of that time. The prayer at hand. As for the, and it's very, it's very likely, or most probable that that man, he prayed all of the other prayers before that in the same manner. Because he said, you know, he said, oh, I swear by the one who sent you with the truth as a prophet, I can't do better than this, so teach me. So the Prophet Sallallahu he ordered him to repeat the prayer at hand. 
he showed him the right way, he taught him the right way to pray properly in a manner that will complete the prayer, and it would be considered correct, and he ordered him to repeat that prayer. As for the previous prayers, he didn't order him to repeat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore, there's a, a principle derived from here, and that is somebody who prayed any wrong and the likes like this, or, or did not perform the action in the legislative manner previously because of ignorance, then uh, he will be ordered to repeat the action at hand at the time of that affair if he had done it that way the other times before that he will be he'll be pardoned and Allah and Allah knows best and Allah knows best this is what Shaykh Ibn Basi mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala Shaykh Ibn Basi says uh, about this hadith he said فَدَلَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَنْ جَهِلَ شَيْئًا مِنْ فَرَائِضِ الصَّلَاةِ ثُمَّ نُبِّهَا فِي الْوَقْتِ الْحَاضِرِ فَإِنَّهُ يُعِيدُ الْحَاضِرَةِ أَمَّ الَّتِي مَضَتْ فَتُجْزِئُهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ الْجَهَلِ هذا هو مقتضى هذا الحديث لأن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يأمر هذا المسيئة في صلاته أن يعيد الصلوات أن يعيد الصلواته الماضية بسبب جهله وما في ذلك من المشقة وما في ذلك من المشقة يعني الشيك بن باسي مشي سيميلر to that which has proceeded. He will not be ordered to repeat those previous prayers uh, because of the hardship in, in that and likewise the fact that he was excused he was excused for his ignorance. But he will be ordered to repeat the prayer at hand. And anybody who was unaware, was ignorant of some of the obligations of the prayer, then this is his case, like the case of that person. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.